All right, let's talk trying to beat the heat. The city of Austin launched misting tents around Republic Square Park to help battle the heat wave and prevent heat exhaustion there. This week, the city announced this cooling tent pilot program to help people beat the hot temperatures in the downtown area. Right now, they're only located on Guadalupe between 4th and 5th Street, but more of these tents could be popping up if they see people using them. City staff also passing out cold bottles of water to passersby. All of Texas, of course, under an excessive heat warning from the National Weather Service, and the heat just keeps coming. With that comes elevated risks for heat-related illnesses. Cannot emphasize enough how important it is for us to pay attention to ourselves and take care of ourselves. And since April, 422 people in Austin have suffered heat-related illnesses. About 700 people die annually from these extreme temperatures in the U.S. And so far this year, 13 Texans have died. Austin's misting tents will be available until 6 in the evening or any day that there is an excessive heat warning. That dog looks like you could use a yeah, We could use it too. <laughs> yeah, that's another point. You take care of your pets especially. Don't, don't forget about them in this high heat. And actually, it was a record-breaking day here in San Antonio. We made it to 104 for the high temperature that breaks the old record by two degrees. The average high, by the way, 95. You look elsewhere, Del Rio, 105, Carrizo Springs, 108, Catula topped out at 109. Those are typically our hotter locations, so I like to point them out. But New Braunfels, even 106 today, Gonzales, 104. We actually have a little bit of an improvement. I'm gonna tell you what that is, how long it's gonna last, and we'll take a look at when our pattern could shift in a bit. Let's get right to it. Is there any hope of this heat wave breaking anytime soon? Out of well, we have some improvements. Okay. okay, and I'm going to get right to that because this is a change that we haven't seen in quite some time. Let's get right to the graphics. Notice we're 104 outside, but here's the key. I'm going to highlight it. Our feels like temperature actually matches the air temperature for a change with all the spring rain and all the lush vegetation and the moist soil that we had. We really had those high heat index values because of the humidity in the air. But now that we're drying out because of the sun baking us for weeks straight, the dew point in the afternoon finally did what it usually does and mixed it down to 59 degrees. So the humidity is dropping in the afternoon and that means the heat index is the same as the air temperature. That's a win right there, if you ask me. 59 degree dew point in Rio Medina, 55 Bernie stage, Converse 54. This is the typical trend. Usually we see that drier air aloft to mix down in the afternoon, whereas June, early July, we weren't seeing that because of all the evapotranspiration from the rainfall that we had all spring in the lush greenery outside. Anyway, temperatures right now, hot, 103 Hondo, 104 Randolph Air Force Base, New Braunfels 106, Del Rio 105, and Gonzales 104. We're about that time of day where we're at our high temperature. Now, speaking of high temperatures going forward, more of the same. 104, 105, all the way through the middle of next week. And then we start to trim back just a little bit by Friday and Saturday as our weather pattern shifts ever so slightly. But it could shift in our favor for at least a glimmer of hope for rain. I'm going to get to that in just one moment, but look at all these records that could fall tomorrow, Tuesday and Friday, at least tying or exceeding the record high temperatures. Now, there is some cooler air out there. You're going to have to go up to northern Minnesota or Canada to get to it, but it's actually below average, cooler than average air across parts of central Canada and even North Dakota, northern Minnesota. Check out Grand Forks, 72 degrees, Minot, 75. Flin Flon, Manitoba. I love some of the city names in Canada, I gotta admit. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, right? 73. Flin Flon is 55 right now. We've got Big Trout Lake at 66, this pool of unseasonably cool air. You could actually attribute it to part of the uh, polar vortex, which does exist in the summertime and dips southward. It's just not the same strength and magnitude as the winter. Uh, but it, it's dipping downward, so there is some parts of the lower 48 that's getting a little bit of relief, at least briefly. 
Here's our pattern shift. The heat high, it's over the desert southwest right now. You saw the national stories of the record challenging heat there. It's going to center itself over Texas again midweek and then slide westward by this time next week. The significance of this is that it amplifies the ridge off to the west of us. And notice these streamlines coming in from Oklahoma and basically coming down the plains. That's our upper level wind. We, when we get into this north and northwesterly flow aloft, it can sometimes lead to the leftovers of showers and thunderstorms that are in North Texas. So there is actually a glimmer of hope long range by next Sunday, Monday, that we could have some slight rain chances. Otherwise, just a little breezy this evening, turning humid as well. Tomorrow morning, we start the day at 78. By noon, we're at 95. 104 for the high temperature, but it could briefly feel like it's around 106. But for the most part, tomorrow afternoon, like today, air temperature will feel the same as the heat index. 106 divine tomorrow, Canyon Lake 103. Nothing but sunshine, but again, a glimmer of hope, maybe in the far long range, some changes. So what you're saying is go to Canada or North Dakota to get cool weather. <laughs> you got it. All right, thank Adam Caskey with hope. Larry <laughs> Ramirez, our road warrior, back <laughs> off the road. Good to see you, buddy. You know, it's nice to be back. Thank you, everybody, for saying, hey, it's good to see you, Larry. I just hope you all mean it, okay? We do. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Hey, Spurs guard Sir Jabari Rice, he was back on the court for the Spurs this summer, making his debut for the Silver and Black. And DeMarvin the Owl's first football camp was awesome. Coming up. What's it feel like for you to be a role model for these kids? Uh, it feels amazing. You know, at one point I was here, you know, at their same level right now, coming out here for a camp, somebody's camp, no matter who it was, and, you know, just came out here to see, experience, and learn. Judson Gray and Pittsburgh Steelers defender DeMarvin Leal held a football camp this morning at Big Board Sports. The Spurs lost to the Pistons 79-73 in Las Vegas yesterday, knocking them out of playoff contention. But former Texas Longhorns guard Serge Ibari Rice made his summer league debut with the Silver and Black. He played 16 and a half minutes and scored 11 points, shooting four of eight from the floor. He had one assist, one block shot, and three steals. The Spurs liked this guy, and that's why they signed him to a two-way contract. During post, he was asked how it feel to play again. Man, it felt real good to actually start playing again. Uh, it felt good just to be in the flow of the game, uh, just the excitement of the game, uh, just being able to run up and down, cheer on your teammates from like the bench instead of on the court side. It's, it's a different feeling. And uh, just being around the game, being around the intensity, uh, all the anger, the different emotions. Like I just, I just love the game of basketball. So it was just a blessing for me to be able to be back. Good. Like my only two interactions with him before, he obviously was just trying to take it all in. It wasn't himself. And then uh, to watch him practice the last couple of days and then the way he performed today, I thought it was great. Spurs will close out their stay in Las Vegas tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. when they play the Thunder at the Cox Pavilion. Toyota Field is the place to be tonight for an international friendly between San Antonio FC and legendary English side Sunderland AFC, one of the most successful clubs in England. The squad is stateside for a preseason tour that will also see New Mexico United and North Carolina FC. San Antonio is ready to see how they stack up against Sunderland. I think it's an um, excellent opportunity for, you know, for not just the club, but for players also. You want to test yourself against the best, and um, this is a team with a lot of history. Um, me myself has watched, you know, many documentaries on Sunderland till I die and stuff like this. So it's a club I'm a, I'm a fan of just because of uh, things like these. Um, and I think you know the guys are optimistic and you know looking forward to this opportunity and um, being able to you know test themselves against what we consider the best and to you know. Um, continue to be playing San Antonio FC's way. The mindset is most definitely the same. We're going to try to give everything like, every we can. Obviously, it's not necessarily mean uh, like mean anything because like a preseason game for you and it's like a friendly. Mm -hmm. But it's personal for like for the players that are playing. It's really going to try the hardest for sure. With their fans in the stands, Sunderland practiced late Friday afternoon at Toyota Field ahead of the match tonight. The team says they're enjoying their visit to San Antonio. Everybody's been nice, but man, this South Texas heat is something else. Um, obviously, it's hot, a lot hotter than back home in England, so a uh, bit of an adjustment for the boys. But um, no, we're enjoying it. It's something different for us, so yeah, it's good. For you guys, the players, what are you all hoping to get out of this friendly and the rest of the friendlies here in America? Um, obviously, the main thing's fitness for us at the minute. Um, you know, we've got a 
we've got a grueling campaign in the championship, so um, just fitness, make sure no one gets injured, and um, obviously we want to we want to win, we want to create a winning culture, so um, that that's important as well. The international friendly between San Antonio FC and Sunderland AFC goes down tonight at 8 at Toyota Field. In tennis, Marketa Vondrasuba has become the first unseated woman to win Wimbledon. She defeated Anz Jabur 6-4, 6-4 in the final. Vondrasuba is a 24-year-old left-hander from the Czech Republic, and she is ranked 42nd in the world. She trailed in each set under a closed roof at center court, but collected the last four games in the first set, then the last three games of the second set to win her first Grand Slam title. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Judson High School grade and current member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, DeMarvin Leal, held his first ever football camp this morning at Judson High School on the same field where he made a lot of memories. 80 kids signed up to learn from Leal and his football friends. We spoke with Marv just minutes before camp started to get his thoughts now that camp day is here. Feeling amazing out here at Judson High School, just getting the kids ready to go, about to get them stretched out, and memories are coming back to me like faster than ever, but I'm loving it. Who do you have out here today? Uh, right now, we got Spencer, we got Darren Brown, we got Kevin Wood, we got Donnie Moody, and man, we got a couple more alumni that's going to come back in a little bit, and we're going to get these uh, young youth stretched out, ready to go and get some good work in. What do you want these kids to take out of this camp? That, you know what I'm saying, even on a Saturday, you can still come and get some work in and you know, you can do it for your community, you can do it for yourself. It's just a matter of who you want to be and how you want to do it. So this is happy that these kids came out to have fun and get some work in. And last thing, what's it feel like for you to be a role model for these kids? Uh, it feels amazing. You know, at one point I was here, you know, at their same level right now, coming out here for a camp, somebody's camp, no matter who it was, and you know, just came out here to see, experience and learn. All the kids had fun, including this one with Hulk on the back of his shirt. Now check this out. His kick up had all the coaches going crazy. A good time was certainly had by all. All right, check out the first ever Savannah Bananas bobblehead, courtesy of the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum. This bobblehead features Split, the bananas mascot. You can order Split the bobblehead through the museum's online store, and each one will be individually numbered. If you don't know the Savannah Bananas, do yourself a favor, look them up. Look them up, yes. <laughs> will be highly entertained. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. Welcome back. One shopper at a San Antonio HEB recently snapped a photo of a unique looking fish in the seafood department and shared it with KSAT. It was the mouthful of sharp teeth that caught the customer's attention. What, you wouldn't eat that? The <laughs> shopper told us the picture was taken at the HEB on Austin Highway near Harry, Harry Wurzbach. Turns out, the weird looking creature is a monkfish, also known as the tenderloin of the sea or the poor man's lobster. They must taste good. Don't look good. Reminds me of an eel pout up north we catch, or a burbot, you know, that we catch mm. ice fishing. Hey, coming up at 10, we'll talk more about the Saharan dust. There's a little bit overhead, but not much. We'll talk about the forecast at 10. All right, thank you, Adam. We'll see you then. We'll see you tonight.